so now I want to go over ionic compounds. They're not so simple as the ones we did. So these are ones where the um, the charge of the element, the metal will vary depending on what it's reacting with. So here we have binary compounds where we say we have a variable oxidation number. That means the oxidation number or charge will vary depending on what it has reacted with. And these are combined with nonmetals. The nonmetals will never have a variable charge, just the metals will. So these are just some examples, and you have some in your book. So here we have um, iron. It can combine with chlorine either in a 1 to 2 or 1 to 3 ratio. So since iron's charge can vary, we have to let somebody else know what charge we're actually using for that particular compound, and we do that using Roman numerals. Same thing with tin. Tin's charge can also vary, so we have to indicate what charge it has using Roman numerals. So this is a, just a um, list from your book, and you do not have to memorize these. I'm going to show you a way to um, figure out where you have to do this. But you will see in your book there's also classical names, which we won't use. But these are kind of, these are old-fashioned, but if you have some older um, containers of chemicals, sometimes you will see these names on the containers, and you might also see them online. Before we um, practice this, I want you guys to get out your periodic table, and we're going to label where you have to do this. So in the middle of your periodic table, what I want you to do is I want you to label this section here as we need Roman numerals. Now there are four exceptions in this middle section. The exceptions are silver and gold. So I want you to kind of box or like you could star these or whatever you want to do. Remember silver is plus one. Gold is also plus one. And then we have cadmium and zinc. Cadmium is plus two. And, um, and zinc is also plus two. The other two exceptions is we also need Roman numerals for tin and lead. So I'm going to put a little star here. So the things that, so what I'm saying is this, the things that are starred are where we need Roman numerals. So this whole section is starred except for silver, gold, cadmium, and zinc. And then tin and lead are also starred because we need Roman numerals with those. Okay, so I want to practice this now in this worksheet that you should, guys should have on Google Classroom. So on the left-hand side, we're going to take the formula for the name, and we're going to write the formula. So here, if we look at lead to iodide, remember, this is the charge. So we're going to write the symbol for lead with the charge and the symbol for iodine with its charge. Remember, the nonmetal's charge will not change, but the metal here does have different charges, and that's why we're using the Roman numerals. So we're going to crisscross, just like we've been doing, and this will be PBI2. Let's do another one. So here, let's look at this one here. We have copper 2 phosphide, so copper is telling us the charge is plus 2. Phosphorus, we know the charge is negative 3, so we do the crisscross, and this becomes Cu3P2. And... Okay, so that's just how we do the left-hand side. With the right-hand side, we're going to have to figure out what the charge is for the transition metal and then put that in parentheses as a Roman numeral. So here, if we look at um, mercury, to figure out its charge, we have to look at chlorine. Chlorine's charge is negative 1, so non-metal's charge will always be the same, times 2. And then we have to figure out there's only one mercury, so we're just going to put x. For this to be true, x will have to equal 2. So this will be mercury 
to chloride. If we look at the next one, we see the oxygen has a charge of negative two, which we know there's three of them. So we had to figure out there's, since there's two cobalts, what times two would make this equal to zero for this to be true? X would have to equal to three. So this would be cobalt three oxide. Now, if we go down, I'm going to show you this one. Here we have tin. So tin is paired with sulfur. So with this, it's really important that you pay close attention because a lot of students at this point, as they get comfortable with it, they just want to kind of like backwards crisscross. But in this case, you're going to see why that's not a good idea. So sulfur has a charge of negative two. There's one of them. So for this to be true, for this all to equal zero, X would have to equal to two. So this is actually 10 two sulfide. So if you had just like quickly thought, oh, it must be a one because you just backwards crisscross, you would find that you would get the wrong answer. So be cautious. Um, make sure you always check the charge of your non-metal and think about it. Make sure it's all equaling zero at the end. Now, there are some on here, as you see right here, where the charge is fixed, where you will not need to use a Roman numeral, so just watch out for those. So just try these and uh, let me know if you have any questions.